Hi guys, welcome to Media Pool. I'm E, and in this video essay, I will discuss a series learned during this semester, which guided me in my video production, promotion, and analysis. Based on Berger's depth framework, which provides six principles of contagiousness, I will argue that videos which reflect practical value with social currency are more contagious than the videos with public and the trigger issues. I will compare and contrast my media geek and media culture videos, which got the most and least user engagement respectively. I will also show how I applied Guo King and Ruby's ideas from how video productions affect students' engagement, and the ideas from Ruby and Ling Wars, the basics of media writing in my video production and promotion. With the analysis of viral video life circle depicted by Corinne and Hemsley and the YouTube analytics, different patterns of user engagement in the two videos will be demonstrated. My Media Geek video which gets the most engagement and views in the limited time emphasizes the contentious elements of practical value with the introduction of six characteristics of documentary works. The video explains the concepts of exposition, observation, testimony, performance, reconstruction, and archive with pen casting and clips from third-party documentary sources. Thus, the video could help viewers easily understand the concepts and save their time. Also, Media Geek gets the most share within my three videos, which might occur because of the social currency. Berger states that, as what we talk about influences how others see us, it's social currency. The academic content in Media Geek could make people look more professional and smart when they share the video. Concerning my media culture video, which gets the least viewers, focuses on the contentious characteristics of the public. The video is a travel vlog about my one day trip to Waterloo, Merseyside, in which I started from the northern line of Merseyside Railway and then visited identifiable locations near hotel and the famous tourist attraction Crosby Beach. My movements in the video are in public spaces, and people might want to travel on the same route after watching my video. As Berger states that, making things more observable makes them easier to imitate, which makes them more likely to become popular. Also, there are triggers promote people think about the travel as it was during the holiday period when the video was published, when many people had already taken a trip or planning to make a journey. Concluded from Guo King and Ruby's research, the shorter videos, talking head, can style tutorials, and fast speaking instructors might contribute to higher engagement for videos. I draw on this research in both my Media Geek and Media Culture videos as they are less than 3 minutes, and I appeared in both videos as narrator and instructor. In Media Geek video, I used pen casting to introduce viewers the concepts one by one. I speak in faster speed to convey messages with more energy and enthusiasm. In media culture, I try to establish a closer relationship with my audience as I keep eye contact with the camera to make the audience feel more engaged. The element of call to action is discussed in both videos. As a media geek, I ask viewers to like, comment, and share. While in media culture, I ask viewers to share their ideas on my Waterloo trip and their own travel experience. The two call to action work differently because the one in Media Geek is more commercial and direct, which resulted in the most engagement within my three videos, while the one in Media Culture focuses on the personal feeling and experience, which resulted in the most comments. I've posted my videos on different social network sites. Firstly, I post them on WeChat, which media platform mainly gets my relation of strong ties in including my close friends and families. Then I post them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which are social media with both strong ties and weak ties from different countries, mainly the United Kingdom, including my fellows majored in communication studies and friends there. Besides to promoting my video, I draw on cool and lingual ideas as putting hashtags and using a problem-solution structure to achieve a broader range of viewers. I put hashtags like film studies, documentary analysis, and media survey in the post of Media Geek video, and start with confused by documentary analysis, and then give the solution that my Media Geek video with the introduction of six documentary characteristics could provide help. Similarly, I use hashtag Waterloo Merseyside, Travel Vlog, Liverpool, and One Day Travel, and use question, Do you want to explore the areas outside Liverpool city center? as a beginning in my post on Media Culture video on Twitter and Instagram. Besides, I mentioned other institutions in my posts. 
University of Liverpool and Department of Communication and Media in Media Geek Post, and Mercy Travel and Liverpool City Region in My Media Culture Post. Corinne and Hamsley represent a slow, fast, slow speed viral video life cycle, which is relevant to the information diffusion and video promotion, so social media works. My Media Geek video life cycle shows that it takes seven days to achieve a peak on 13th January, with a decline first at the first four days and a growth first in the next three days. After the peak, the views get a sharp decline again on the 14th. It's because I posted the video on WeChat after uploading on the 6th, which made the video got 42 views on the first day. However, as YouTube is founded in mainland China, some of my strong ties couldn't watch my videos and make engagement. The promotion doesn't work as well as I thought. The first half part of the Media Geek life cycle in the trend of decline matches Corinne and Hamsley state that the number of views for socially driven videos ramped up to a peak and gradually declined. Then I choose to post my video on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on the 11th, 12th, and 13th respectively, and the promotion worked successfully and immediately, which reflected in the sharp growth on the 11th, followed by the mild growth with the peak on the 13th. It indicates Grandvator's idea that weak ties provide people with access to information and resources beyond those available in their own social circle, while strong ties have greater motivation to be of assistance and are typically more easily available. Both strong ties and weak ties through my social media plays important roles. In contrast, my media culture video starts with a growth force at first and achieved a peak on the 7th January, then followed with a decline and sharp growth. The views achieved a higher peak on the 11th of January. The first peak was achieved because of the post of video on WeChat, while the second peak might be achieved because of the sharing on Facebook. From Media Geek video, it received 323 views, 4 shares, 40 likes, and 18 comments. It's shown from the YouTube analytics that 50% viewers are from the United Kingdom and 50% viewers are from the United States. It might be because several of my friends are in the United States and they shared my video, which helps the video get a wider range of viewers. As there is not enough demographic data to show the gender and age, it couldn't reflect whether the real viewers are the same as my main targeted viewers, who are aged between 16 to 25 years old, majored in film studies or communication studies, or who are interested in documentary work. There are 70 comments in English and one in Spanish. All the comments are positive. 12 comments are about the video topic content, 2 comments are about the pen casting, and the other 4 comments are about encouragement for the producer. The phenomenon fit Linda Green's idea that the how-to general of videos generated the most positive comments. In contrast, for media culture video, it received 179 views, 2 shares, 30 likes, and 20 comments, which gets 144 views less than media geek video. Similar to media geek video, there are 58 viewers located in the United States and 42 viewers located in the United Kingdom. The video gets the least viewers within my three videos, while it achieved the most comments. Within the 20 comments, there are 2 comments about self-experience, 13 comments about feeling on my travel, 4 people mentioned they want to visit Waterloo in the future, and 1 comment that points out the drawback of the video and gave me advice on how to make better travel vlog. Compared with the comments from Media Geek, the comments in Media Culture covers more aspects and ideas, which reflects that individuals are more likely to receive novel ideas from weak ties than from strong ties. In conclusion, this video essay compares and contrasts my Media Geek video and Media Culture video in terms of production, promotion, and analysis. The Media Geek video achieves most viewers with higher engagement because it reflects the practical value with social currency and also it's targeted at specific audience. I promoted this video through different social networks with both strong ties and weak ties to encourage participation. My media culture video gets the least viewers. However, its engagement is still high as it contains issues with the public and trader. And I got the knowledge about how to make the video production with more engagement. I think it will be helpful for me if I work in media industry in the future. It's all about this video essay and if you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe.